All right, welcome back to Hitting the Bars. We have missed you. It's how are you doing, Kelsey? I'm doing good. I was just like, we've missed you so much. It's been a week. <laughs> um, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, you know, just getting ready for the summer. Oh Tell us, like, even though I, I know I was going to say, no, I time. just need to feel sun. Like, you, like, that craving after like eight months of just rain and gloom and snow, there's like a weird hunger your body gets where it's just like, I would do anything just not to put on a jacket. <laughs> anything. Totally. Or like that feel of like a warm summer night. That's like my favorite thing. Like I like roll down our windows here and it's just like always that like nostalgic, like it brings me back to memories in like Washington where it would be like so warm and you don't need a jacket. Or it's just the carefree. Like every time I leave the house, I'm like, hey, are my shoes appropriate? Do I have a jacket? Is it going to get chilly? Do I need my umbrella? You have to like... It's, it's a whole workout putting on all your stuff and everyone i'm sorry to talk about the weather but we just we're just so close to that that like it's just in the distance where we're getting this like we're tricking ourselves like i'm wearing shorts every day it's not short weather but i'm like i don't care i'm just embracing summers around the corner and it's just like lingering in the short distance and it's almost here 100 percent. i used to watch pretty little liars like in high school i don't know were you a pretty little liar girl i never was like i usually like i'm a big tv person especially the for whatever reason the timing of it i just never yeah. got into i like loved the outfits and like the makeup and the hairstyles and i don't remember uh-huh. where it was based but like they clearly filmed in california where like all year round it was like nice and sunny and cozy and oh. that was like literally yeah. when i lived in huntington you can wear whatever you want you can wear a sweater it's not too hot and i remember like looking like watching that show and being like I wish I could dress like them, but it was too freaking cold in Seattle that I would like bundle up like five jackets, like North Face, rain jacket, like yep. they were always so stylish and I would have gotten rained on and that that's like a random tidbit, but that's all I think about when I remember my childhood and trying to dress up. I just remember watching things like Laguna Beach and the OC and all those and I was like, wait, they don't have to dress for the weather? Like it's such like... People dress, yeah. I, I'm sorry, Canadians, I love us, but we're not fashionable, but we can't be. We don't have a choice. Like we have to survive eight <laughs> months of the year. It's not like you have one jacket. You can't, there's of course the rich people who can spend and buy like five macage jackets and all those fancy ones. So I was like, no, you get one parka and you're wearing it every day and you need waterproof shoes. <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's just like, I was like, imagine mm-hmm. how nice it'd be to just get up and dress cute every day. I was like, ah. Absolutely. And it's, it's almost it's almost that season. It's almost cute dressing season. I'm still mm-hmm. in ugly, ugly practical season. <laughs> it's it's the cozy, like don't want to be uncomfortable season. Oh yeah. Cozy to like you're just walking around in a blanket. Especially since COVID, there's no longer fashion on the streets of Canada. It's <laughs> like if you see jeans, you're like, nice. You're that's looking why, fancy. That's why I like like that sweatpants like are a trend now like you look like a badass girl if you're in sweatpants i know and i'm like here for it because i feel like you just looked not cute before you looked lazy and now you look stylish Yeah, matching sweatpants and some gold hoops and you are styling that is Mm -hmm. the epitome of 2022 fashion 100 percent. so how are you feeling post-surgery couple weeks now i'm feeling good i'm feeling good so it's about almost three weeks so I think I'm like two weeks five days uh and I'm almost feeling 100% like my digestion is better my skin's better like there's no aches and pains I don't feel like you're always like swollen after surgery it's just like an uncomfy like you're not stretching you're just walking you're not worried and like your body's just all you have to care about is your body healing itself so I'm like that's just part of it but like the last couple days I've actually like dressed cute I don't have to wear that like ugly surgery bra that's now covered in makeup and self tan and like just it like and now so I'm like I'm dressing kind of cute putting on my makeup washing my hair and I can pretty much do everything I just can't run yet and I can't like sign really high intensity and I can't do like chest specific exercises Mm -hmm. and like nothing like pushing overhead um but I'm feeling good like I'm almost like I'm over the hump good that's awesome that's, so you'd say the recovery it, is better when you get them extracted then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I even just got asked that on Instagram. For sure, it's a way easier recovery uh, explanting the implanting. But 
I didn't get my capsules removed. So mm-hmm. I don't know. There's, it's called like an NPOC or something like that. That's when you get like the, and you sco- like do a full scope. Um, I, d- I decide not to. That was my own personal choice. And because it's like a less severe uh, surgery. So I was like shocked. Like I was cut open three weeks ago. Like I was yeah. literally limpless on a bed, just sliced <laughs> open. And now I'm kind of like so good. vivid. The body is crazy. <laughs> I know. I was maybe like people have seen yeah, like, driving their car. And now they have this vision of me helpless on a bed. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're someone who's queasy about that. I love you. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Well, you looked bomb in your new sports bras. Oh, thank you. Your, I, your like, new I'm, boob job is fitting. It looks great. Oh, thank you. That's I just feel like I'm like my, my best friend uh, saw me for the first time. She came. She doesn't live in Vancouver and she saw me on Friday and she's like, you just make sense now. I'm like, yeah, I think my body just like, you know what I mean? Like that's what, and that's what it should come down to. I was like, I feel like my body matches itself. So we got, we're officially a double A cup. We're itty bitty titty committee back, but you know what they, I love them. I love them. And then, oh, I guess I'll just answer a few questions pop in mind. Uh, just because I, I got it. I didn't get a lift. Um, I just got the explant. I, I just got a lot of questions. People asking about that. That seems to be people are curious how saggy they are. And I was like, I was surprised. Saggy? Are they saggy? They weren't. No, like they're obviously not like perky in comparison to <laughs> fake boobs. Like they're they're all natural. But I was like, and they tend to be a little bit saggier, but already they're kind of like settling Bouncing normal. Back. Yeah, so I was happy about that because, like, some girls get, like, inverted nipples in that when they take it out. Mm. Stuff like that can happen. But I, I also, I think you have to have, if you naturally have a bigger cup size and you get implants and then you take them out, there's more of a chance for things to kind of mm. go wonky because there's nothing to go wonky. There's, like, nothing there. <laughs> yeah, totally. That is crazy. Oh, well, good. I'm glad that you're recovering well. Thank you. How's... And I don't have any boob job updates, but I do have a life update. That's what I was going to say. I want to hear life updates. Enough about boob talk. Let's yeah. Hear what's going on over there? Uh, yeah. Well, Michael and I decided to have a summer in New York. And it's because <laughs> our lease was ending because our the house we were living in was getting sold. And we bought a new house. But... Um, it's not going to be ready until after the summer. So we were like, we have nowhere to live. Mm-hmm. So we figured, why not? We can, you know, with our jobs, both working remotely for ourselves. We're like, why not, you know, get a different change of pace? And like, we've been infatuated with New York. So we decided, and it's it's close to, uh, to where we live. It's like three hours away from Puerto Rico. So it's just perfect. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize it's that close. Yeah, maybe like three and a half, but... You know, when we thought like, oh, we could go back to, you know, L.A. or something like California, we were just like, that's such a commute. And like, we want to try something new. So Mm -hmm. we are going to try and be city people in New York, New Yorkers. And we're really excited. We just like locked in an apartment. We're just going to be there for a couple months, truly until our house is done. Yeah. Um, But I'm excited to like meet new people. And there's just like so much opportunity in New York. And so many people. And I'm a very, very social Uh person. So I'm excited to just like go to gyms and be like, hi, hello, let's hang out and try and befriend lots of people. So that's my I'm so excited for you. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Have you spent much time in New York? Or? We went, dude, I went when I was like oh, yeah. a kid with my dad. Um, he yeah. took my brother and I like, for this crazy fun, like dad, like my parents had just divorced. So he was oh. like trying to be the cool dad. And, like, ah, take classic. Day. They always yeah, do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I was young, so I don't remember much of yeah. it. I just remember eating a lot of cheesecake. And so we went, Michael and I went for Christmas for like a week and we just like fell in love with the city and the hustle and bustle and I love Central Park I am like infatuated with Central Park so I'm a big like outdoorsy girl growing up naturally in Seattle so I just would love to like go have a picnic there so we really don't know much about New York we picked our apartment like just hoped it's a good area (laughs) and you know Google says it is yeah so I was like yeah I love that. I'm so excited yeah. for you. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I'm going to come visit. So expect an in-person podcast. Because if you guys have been following yes. me, you know my like absolute love for New York. Like New York is the reason I'm doing everything I'm doing. Like that was like I did a trip there and I was like super inspired. Oh yeah. New York is like the stem really? of like 
my career from like, you know how everyone has that coming to moment, like I'm leaving my small town and I'm going to the big city. Well, I'm Canadian. I can't just like get off and move to the States, but yeah. the trip I took to New York and just like the lights and the hustle and the bustle and the art, like the everywhere. I was just like, I need to be a part of this. I need to like go after my dreams, like screw small town Edmonton. I'm packing up and like, so serious events. I went to Toronto, the New York of Canada. Um, but yeah, so that's why I say like, it holds such a special place in my heart. Like I love it so much. So I'm definitely coming to visit yes. in June or sorry, August. August, August, August is when August, we decide. August. Yeah, I know there is like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like New York is one of those places that you either love it or you either hate mm-hmm. it. And whenever I tell oh, people, yeah. oh yeah, we're going to go for the summer. They're either like fantastic, great time of the year. Like they're like, oh, mm-hmm. you're going to love it. And those are like the people that always view the glass. Like, what is it? Uh, half, full. half full yeah yeah and then there's the ones that are like fair warning it's gonna smell and I'm like no duh it's a city like yeah those are the <laughs> ones with the half empty and I can tell and I'm like it's fine like yeah. it's a city I lived in Miami and it stunk because it was so hot yeah. and it did not bother me one bit so exactly it's just part of it it's like city life isn't for anyone mm-hmm. but like when you're young and then you got the energy I'm like oh get and get yeah. in the chaos like that's when I was like I love the chaos. You need breaks from it, but I, I thrive in it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we since we live on an island and where we live is like a beach town, it's very relaxed. Like there's not yeah. a lot of restaurants. There's not a lot of like, there's tons of nature. So I'm literally mm-hmm. never bored. But like people that don't love nature, they're like twiddling their thumbs or something like mm-hmm. that. So it's just like a good change of pace. And like one day we'd love to live in New York part time in like maybe do an Airbnb where mm. like we're not home, yeah. we Airbnb it, whatever, you know? I love it. But we're like, let's let's get a feel of it. Like who knows? Maybe we won't like living there. Then but you know. I think Michael and I are both going to love it because we love the city in general. Especially, I feel life is so much about the contrast. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's not just the beachy mm-hmm. vibes. It's not just the urban. Like there's such a nice beauty of getting like doing the one when you're burnt out of the other and like rejuvenating yourself. Like I find uh-huh. you need that hustle and bustle and then you kind of get burnt out of it and you just need relaxation and simplicity. And then you're like, hey, I need, I need like yeah. a, I'm, I'm still in a big city, but sometimes Vancouver is very like, there's the downtown, but the rest of it is very nature. And sometimes I think it makes me soft. So I need that Toronto yeah. hardness. Like I need that like push and like motivation. And then I go to Toronto and I love it. And then you burn mm-hmm. out and then you go back to Vancouver. And that's kind of yeah. life. And I feel like it's good it like to get out and experience new places because I think like, mm-hmm. you know, Michael and I had moved from Seattle where we grew up our entire life to California because I was like infatuated by Los Angeles and I loved the beach. I love the thought of being warm all the time and like it was fantastic and honestly I didn't want to leave when we moved to Miami but then like once I did rip that band-aid off I was like why did we not move sooner? Like Mm -hmm. I love that I was there for like four and a half years but I missed out on like exploring so much that it's like if you have the opportunity I think it's great to experience like new cities and new states or Mm -hmm. even countries like I think sometimes people are really nervous of getting out of their comfort zone with that but you just kind of have to do it and like you'll grow from being uncomfortable in a new city and now like literally place me anywhere and I'm unfazed like I can get around on my own I can make friends like I feel like it's taught me a lot to like get out of your comfort zone and just life's too short to stay somewhere forever because it's your comfort, fully like even know? like the first move is always the scariest like the first time I moved from I think my first big yes. cross-country move was like Edmonton to Halifax and then you do it it's scary and then I move back and then I moved to Toronto by the time you're going there and you're kind of like you you get the groove and now like I move back and forth between Europe and Canada every few months and like it it's not hard like yeah it's obviously hard and I'm, I'm blessed that I can do that and but you it it makes the world seem smaller than it is. I think until you travel, the world seems foreign. And then you realize mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah, there's different cultures, but like that's the beauty in yeah. it. And I think it's just, if you have the opportunity, you got to jump on mm-hmm. it. Because they'll teach you so much about you, about the world, about different opinions. I think the world would be not so polarized mm-hmm. right now if they just spent time traveling. Because once you travel and meet other mm-hmm. people, you see different sides. And then you're just like an open book. You're like, yeah, I just want to experience other cultures and people and like you just become more of an understanding human yeah like empathetic in a way of like understanding Very. different viewpoints and yeah i completely agree wow 
I feel like I we we have, we need to jump into our topic today. We got <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's kind of we're gonna cycle back to kind of where we're at. It's kind of just the theme. That's why we're on topic with all this. But mm-hmm. do you want to dive in to introduce the theme? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. My turn to intro it. Ooh. I know. Let's yes. Go. So we wanted to discuss the famous that girl trend. Everyone, majority of us have seen it. If you have not, pull up TikTok and all you have to do is type in that girl and a million videos of women or men are going to pop up with like aesthetic, beautiful morning routines or like a beautiful grocery haul and them talking about how wonderful and organized their day is and which we love that and it Mm -hmm. motivates us. But I feel like Kelty and I were talking about after you know, it getting a little repetitive and it's almost unrealistic to maintain it at times, like making your bed every single day. Like there's times you don't, there's times you're hung over and you don't have your green juice in the morning or the you're out of lemons and you can't put it in your water. Heaven forbid! <laughs> Heaven forbid! <laughs> or even like, you know, we don't have time to meal prep sometimes. And so Kelty and I wanted to discuss the kind of just... I don't even know how to describe it. We just want to dive into what it looks like now that people Mm -hmm. are getting busy because the world is opening back up and if they can maintain this, that girl trend. Uh I I just got to paint a little picture and maybe where I'm at before we dive into it. So now in terms of fitness trends, that girl is definitely the healthiest and balanced. I think we can all agree compared to like Mm -hmm. extreme keto, bodybuilding, no carbs, anti-fat, extreme, like all that kind of stuff. It's been the most like well-rounded. There's nutrients and it's about romanticizing your nine to five, I think, or you're just romanticizing the little moments of your life. That's why when it first happened, I was like (laughs) clapping. I was on the that girl trend. I'm like, yes, let's love it. Mm -hmm. But after three years, if I see another one video start with the gray iPad, I like uh, iMac with the time on the screen. If I see one more, oh, I'm smashing my yes. phone. I am so over it. I'm so over it. I'm like, I can't. I just can't do it because maybe this is what it is. I saw this one TikTok because our personalities now are TikTok, um, and I can never unsee it. And I'm going to explain this reference mm-hmm. to Sav because she didn't know it. So there's this girl, we may insert it uh, if we remember on, for the YouTube, but she pretty much just says she loves watching all the wellness TikToks and all the young girls cosplaying Patrick Bateman. And once I heard that, I can never, never unsee it. So what Patrick Bateman is, is uh, Christian Bale in American Psycho. So you've never seen it, right? No. Okay. Oh is, my God. is Christian so... Bale Batman? Yes. Same actor. Okay. Mm-hmm. But this is American Psycho. Oh, no, I was going to be like, it might have been. It's probably his most famous. Like Batman's like the most. No, I want. Anyways, in my opinion, my personal opinion, his best work. It's an unreal show. If you haven't seen it, see it. It's so good from like a artsy fartsy kind of aspect. But who he is, is he's. I'm going to butcher some of the things. I haven't watched it in a decade. Uh, But he plays this, like, just think of Christian Bale. He's a beautiful man. And he can play that very, like, chiseled draw, like, perfect skin, perfect body, brown hair. He looks like that. And he plays this, like, lawyer or just rich man in New York. And that's kind of who he plays. And the whole idea, it starts off with, like, him in his beautiful penthouse, like, doing his skincare completely dialed in and everything's shaved and everything's measured down and he's like so precise and perfect and flawless and beautiful and he gets all the most beautiful women and he's, he's just very much like that like very meticulous but like deep down he's a serial killer so he like you know i mean oh. i don't give it too much away but that's kind of like so duck was the idea of it kind of dextery but like more so like he's the dream man he's the um, what's the guy from like 50 shades of gray um oh Christian, oh, Greg. I wait. I think the character's name is Christian. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, Christians, red flag for the summer. We're all staying away from Christians. If you slide into your DMs, we're staying away from Christians this summer. But also, the fact I remembered his I, name. I'm impressed. <laughs> well done. Um, yeah, right. But he, uh, yeah, it's just like just that. That's who it is, and it's a whole idea of like oh mm-hmm. it looks so perfect on the outside and it's everything you possibly want but deep down you're still a killer and now 
all I can see when I look at this that girl tread is these girls, they perfectly, they set it up, they pearl their matcha at the right time and do their six step skincare. And all I can think about is their underlying cereal color. Oh my God. <laughs> and I know they're not, but like, it's kind of, I was like, we need to realize like it, we can all fake social media. Like I'm sure it is nice to romanticize and make it pretty, but now all I can see is like you at the perfect angle filming your green juice as like behind you mm -hmm. is completely ripped apart and your kitchen's mm -hmm. a mess, but you just filmed in this one perfect angle and put it together. And I just, it was fun for a little bit, but now we're all just cosplaying this beautiful life. And that's all I could think about. Yes. And I'm also sick of green juices and having this perfect routine and schedule. And that is part of life. And I'm not saying to cancel it. I just mean like that's all we've had to do for three years is just like romanticize our not, our daily little things. And we needed that. It was like a little coping mechanism. We did, yeah. And yeah. COVID. It was beautiful. But guess what, baby? The roaring 20s are here. I'm not saying the, the pandemic. The has unleashed. <laughs> I'm not saying it's gone, but I'm saying masks are no longer mandatory on U.S. flights. You know, you're allowed to travel internationally. We got trips planned. That summer we've been waiting three years for is here. And if you're spending it, romanticizing the green juice and not getting out there and living life, no, 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 no. <laughs> and that's how I feel about the that girl trend right now. Okay, wow. Hostile, but I like it. You know, no. that, that was a good um, comparison. Now I need to watch American Psycho to understand Dude. this. There. But, Honestly, everyone, there's a movie recommendation for the summer. Okay, please watch go. it. You'll sound like if you okay. want to impress someone, it's a good like if you have a someone who's really into like cinematic movies and arts and stuff. Say American mm. Psycho. It's very like okay. oh yeah, I've seen it. Okay, mm -hmm. it's my favorite. Just American Psycho. Yes. <laughs> if you run into a Christian a uh, guy named Christian at the bar and he's all. Oh, sophisticate all this be like have you seen american psycho i personally really love the contrast of the blood on the white walls and <laughs> just, just <laughs> bullshit it therefore you must be a serial killer yeah. as well <laughs> well my hot take on that girl is honestly i did love mm -hmm. seeing all the trends and it did make me feel motivated made me feel great about myself Very. especially during covid because you kind of feel like you're out of like there's yes. nothing you can control mm -hmm. except your small actions throughout that day because yeah. none of us knew what was going on in the world, like what actually was going on. So I think it kind of helped us stay mm -hmm. sane. And I think that's fantastic. But 100% honesty, yeah. I can never be that girl because I am disorganized. Literally today, I was trying to find paperwork mm -hmm. and you should have seen my friend Julia was over and I was literally like throwing things apart, like... Mm -hmm tossing everything up, yeah. trying to find this like one paper I should have put in a folder. And like, I'm a bit messy. Like I just kind of go with it. Like some days I make my bed. So for me, this, that girl trend was like, I, I can't even film it for a video. No. Like it just was like not authentic to what I was and what I am. And I will own up to it. But I did like the morale around it. Like I loved how it brought people together and it motivated women. Yes. But then at some point, I just think it got toxic. Kind of like you said, where it was like, I'm so sick of everyone doing the same thing. I am so sick of feeling like I need to have this perfect morning routine where sometimes mm -hmm. I might go out with friends the night before and sleep in till nine or whatever it may be, you know? So I think mm -hmm. it just hit this, this block of being like, all right, we need to find something new. And Kelty, you found a new TikTok with like the new theme for the summer and tell them like what it is because I had never heard of this, but it sounds freaking fun. <laughs> I don't know if it's a thing, even if it's not, I'm like, okay, hey, let's just like, oh, yes. I could just have a very like specific for you page. And either way, I'm going to spread the world about because I, I love it because for me, before I even like go into it specifically, just a preface, I, I love routine. I love productivity. You could probably know this about me. I'm, a, I'm just, I, I love a routine. I love something that makes you optimize in anything in life. But my favorite okay. thing about life is like the messiness. Like I love raw human emotion. I love art. And I find that can only be like, it can never be manufactured. It can never come out of routine. Uh, you can routinely show up to sign, but it's like, 
It's always, always canned it for a reason. Like my favorite photos are like those random ones you take your girlfriend at 2 a.m. on the street with a slice of pizza. And you can never create that. It just happens. Or just like someone writes a song because they're feeling a certain way. Or it, it just, all those moments in life, they just, they happen very naturally and organic. And they're usually messy. Like it's, it's all this, this chaotic energy that just creates something, at least for me. And so that's why I was like, when I heard this, I was so pumped. So the new trend, which we're replacing that girl with, it's called Night Lux. And this is where, like, I follow a lot of those, like, trend forecasts. And I was like, ooh, this is the vibe we all need going into the summer. And so the idea is, it's kind of like the antagonist to the that girl. I, like, think of the that girl as the pretty and white, uh, like, white background, green matcha, very neutral colors during the day. Night Lux is, like what comes alive at night. Like think of like going out, like I'm no longer overexposed. Like everything's underexposed. So you know how there's a lot of that mm-hmm. happening? Kind of even social media. Like people used to be like bright and white and now people are kind of doing like dark and moody. Yeah. It's kind of falls into that. It's very like roaring 20s, glam and glitz, late night craziness. Like think euphoria. Yes. Euphoria, you know what I mean? And I, I'm, makeup. Exactly. You know, just we love wild. A good, like, even, tight dress going out. <laughs> I was going to say Fully. slutty dress, but I feel like that's... Honestly, it's one of those. I'm like, let the girls I love girls a good slutty out. dress. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the fun of it. Like, we've been all good. We've been all... We've all listened to the rules. We've all followed. We all did what we had to do. We dressed in our sweats. I hate wearing pink. I'm wearing full-on pink all summer. I don't care. I got my tits out. Oh, I'm not... 100%. Like, I'm going... I'm wearing pink. I'm wearing orange. I'm wearing yellow. I'm wearing colors that don't match. I'm wearing crazy patterns. 100%. I'm wearing glitz and glitz. Like, did you see my Coachella outfit? Like I literally, I did <laughs> literally was like in space. Bus. Lately, I've been into like jumpsuits. Oh, I know. Like yes. sexy jumpsuits. Oh, oh I've seen, you I've know. seen one or two photos. That's like that's my a fun vibe. vibe. I'm huh. like, dude, right? Except it's harder. True. You have to pee. actually. Have I ever? I <laughs> yeah. Here's a little little trick. Maybe people do this, but in case you don't so, do this, I'll now do this what? is what I did competitive swimming for many years. Here's your summer hack if you're wearing rompers or that. Now it won't be able to do this with all of them. But when I did competitive swimming, you'd be in a soaking wet one okay. piece. And like, it was so hard to get off. And sorry, we had a technical difficulty. So I'm just jumping right back into it. So the hack is, like I said, competitive swimming, you're in a wet, tight, tight one piece. And like, to take it off and put it back on is like impossible. So what you do, so if, we have all girls here, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you sit on it and instead of like taking it off, you just think of grabbing it and just scooting it to the side. And, and then- just like... And then peed. So you don't have to take the whole thing off. So you just have to like bunch it up and then like all the way. Oh, like I wish I had a visual, but just think of right now. You grab your short bottoms and you pinch it up. Like, so you're giving yourself like it's all the way in your crack and you just pull it all the way to one side and just hold on for dear life and just pull it with but all I your might. But I feel like, like a jumpsuit would have so much material. You're going to pee on it. As long as like, if it's a short jumpsuit, if it's like a leg jumpsuit, yeah, you can't do it. It's a romper. But like a romper yeah. in that. There's your little hack. It's it's going to take a couple tries. Try it sober. Don't don't try this for the first time drunk <laughs> at the bar at 2 a.m. I don't want you yeah, walking 100%. home with a puddle. You will have pee on you. But it's it's a nice once you once you've mastered it. Oh my god, your drunk self is just going to be so happy. So there's my little hack for y'all. Okay, I love it. Mm-hmm. We'll continue with the the night looks. So yeah, and I think it's so just the moral of the story with it. I think the moral of the story is like, don't feel guilty. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of us, like, whether the that girl, it was like, you truly embraced it, you loved it, and it's fine. Even if some of you hearing, you might be in a phase in your life, like, I have zero desire to go out. I have zero desire. But at the same time, make sure deep down that's like, it's not that you've become comfortable. Because I think we all picked up a ton of coping mechanisms in the last three years. And they were so beautiful. And unfortunately, some are probably not the healthiest. Some are super healthy, uh, depending where you are on the spectrum. Like that girl could have been mm-hmm. super healthy and you've done a lot of great stuff. It could also have been really toxic. But like, don't feel guilty about whatever your coping mechanism was for the last three years. But like, I'm, I'm just saying like, kind of let it go now. It was a beautiful thing. And like, there's beauty on the other side. So not being like, if this summer you decide to have all these crazy nights out with your friends, if you like, go and live it. Because we literally, you like earned it. And I want people to realize Mm -hmm. that. Like you spent so long the last couple of years just like doing the bare, like 
just small little victories and we romanticize our day to day and we had and you did it and you did it and there's time to celebrate and that's totally fine because i think balance what a lot of people get wrong at least this is my own experience a lot of people disagree balance is really portrayed as like you achieve balance daily you achieve it weekly like it's like you have you eat healthy all day and you have a little treat or you eat really healthy during the week and you let yourself a little loose on the weekends and like you're always in that but like balance can also be seasonal and i've also learned this like you're really focused on a specific goal and like i'll use sports as an example sports usually you only like six months of the year you're eating season you're really focused you're with your team you're practicing and after season that month to two you let it go a little you go have fun you don't care about the gym as much like i'm not saying you know now i'm not saying like binge because anything can be taken to extreme i'm not saying binge eat binge drink like that like toxic cycle because i've been but i'm saying like the enjoyment if it's pure enjoyment it's not a binge you know what i mean like if it's pure like you're full of serotonin and your happiness and you're with friends and it's a memory that's like never something to feel guilty about and like you you're not letting yourself go you're just in a different season that like you haven't had and you, we've also had like two summers you no one really got this chance so that's why i'm like let's start like looking less as like this is like this toxic bad thing like a wild summer and more of like let's like we romanticize their simple life let's romanticize the like beauty in like the wildness if that makes sense and i think euphoria does a good job obviously i'm not glamorizing the toxic side of it but it's just like it doesn't always have to be pretty like you yeah. know what i mean like messiness can be beautiful if that makes sense yeah and it's just like at the end of the day i'm going to remember those nights way more than I'm going to remember like how on point I was with my routine you know Uh like for me at least that's how I love making my memories and it yeah sometimes you're hungover for a full day and you're like that sucks but it's okay it's like truly what matters is how you pick yourself back up and I think we want you guys to like how we're going to have fun still. I mean, I'm going to New York. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to go out. I want to go to all the bars. I want all the lychee martinis and espresso martinis. But like, I also do want to like still instill those habits that I think are important Mm -hmm. in my life. And not, of course, like disregard all of it and be like, screw Mm -hmm. it, summer. Because yeah, if you're on a long trip, it's probably hard to keep those routines. But to at least like ground yourself in some point of being like hey okay i'm gonna still try and like make it to the gym three times a week or even like i'm gonna Mm -hmm. try and like go for walks like i'm gonna instead of you know watching netflix i'm gonna go for an hour walk or something that you can also just keep balanced and keep sane and still instill those habits you did learn during this that girl movement and during covid um but also live a little and get crazy get wild Uh uh-huh and like plan for a bit of the wild but also like how you can keep your routine a little bit like and i just kind of contradicted myself but as someone who travels a lot like uh we're planning a bunch of trips like i'm going to europe for a lot of the summer and like i found something that really works instead of being like oh i have to have this really specific program i have to follow it i have to find a gym that allows me to do this i kind of flip it and i think of like fitness is also you know how you you get excited for new restaurants in a city? I get really excited for new gyms and ways to move my body. And like I think that's a really mm-hmm. undervalued thing. And I hope that girl kind of taught us that. Because the last little while, couple of years, fitness has become more of like, we go for a spin class and then we go to brunch. And like at least everyone here, I think that's how you might listen to us. So hopefully it, it resonates. But I know we're planning. We're obviously planning some crazy nights. We're going to Ibiza. We're planning some great dinners. We're planning nights to the beach, but we're also like, oh, this gym looks really cool. And this, I like, I've heard about this like cool bowl place. And so it's like also mm-hmm. fun, like travel destinations, looking forward to summer, like try and say new. And if you don't have the chance to move somewhere else, like, or travel, just try somewhere else new in your city. Like it's a little bit easier. You can travel, like go to the other side of town and try a fitness class there or try a new gym or move outside and like, Think of it like that. Like it's an exciting thing you plan for. And it just simplify. Move your body every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That And it, it as long as you're doing that, that's all it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, 100%. I love that. We're here for the that girl and, with the night lux theme. What could exactly. we call it? A mesh. Ooh, that's a, <laughs> I was like, that lux, that night. Night. That night lux night girl. <laughs> It sounds like yep, a really bad rap. Girl. 
<laughs> yeah, right? We all <laughs> imagine us making this aesthetic no. look on TikTok and it's like, green juice workout. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, shots. I, like, that's like the aesthetic this. I want. That's what I want. I was like, no, we should be, but it's not that girl. It's that girl. <laughs> it's like, yes. it just, it's like, instead of like, it's all like capital. in our voice. Exactly. It's not, yes. It's, it's not, oh, that girl. It's just the girl over in the corner. They're like, that girl. <laughs> it's like, that's the uh, difference. Huh? That's the difference. I love that. And that's how it all should be. Wild for the summer. Just like those, make those memory moments and just like, so even if there's not a pretty bow, I just like, I just want us all to get excited right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel there's not enough excitement in the air. Like, it's going to be the summer, guys, regardless. Like, we're, we've are we been waiting for this. And I yeah. think... And... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we're all okay. a little traumatized with good reason of, like, we're like, let's not get our hopes up too high. True. Everything. I was like, I get it. But... <laughs> yeah, I hope we're not speaking I, I too think, soon. I think... You know, this could have aged really bad. <laughs> so knock on wood. But I'm just going to, you know what? I'm sick of just like play to save. I was like, I'll get excited if I get bummed out. Doesn't happen, doesn't happen. Let's just get excited. Yeah. And also normalize, kind of like we had said in our last podcast, like normalize going out. Normalize like having those fun nights and wanting to have that and don't feel shame for it, you know? Like if you want to post about it, have at it. Or I don't know, like screw the perfect aesthetic like I think that's at the end of the day like that girl trend like stems it goes so much further than just that like simple trend because now it's like it it has quotes behind like I'm even guilty of making like an aesthetic beautiful reel you know of me like picking an apple but it's like at the end of the day like that's just not realistic not all of us live in like this beautiful you know white gorgeous house mm-hmm. that like has a fridge full of green juices at all times yeah. like and i can't remember the last time i had a green oh. juice <laughs> i i mean i technically drink athletic greens every day but that's not a green juice that's like a hack job <laughs> it's just like it's just it's just yeah, green yeah, I'm like powder i know does not count a green I mean, juice like, so i was like but juicer. i like to pretend i have it so that's like my my fake version but i i think that's also another thing of like just even to go back over to the beginning is like realizing the like privilege that that girl has is i think like that was the underlining uh theme of i've I've just lived in many of apartments just simply like just a lighting standpoint like i've lived in apartments that are like really yellow and they don't have a lot of natural light and no matter how hard i try to make something look pretty it looks crappy now if you live in this beautiful penthouse all white beautiful apartment everything you take looks aesthetic so that's even like i think the funny thing about that girl trend is there's a lot of things that were like oh look at me being organic and authentic and like i messed up but it was still pretty it was like do you know what i mean like i there's a term but it was like a like a catered messiness i don't even know how to explain it but like do you know what i mean like it's still it's because usually if it's on a beautiful white thing with a beautiful bowl and great ingredients it's gonna look good regardless um and like i guess i don't want to say pretty privileged because that's not the mm-hmm. word but i mean it's in that like wheelhouse and I, i'm kind of contradicting myself because i'm in an all-white <laughs> apartment right now <laughs> but like it's true like having lived in this like i take a photo side i was like damn yeah, this looks good no, if i took a sure. photo of that apple in my old place it'd be like Ugh. oh yeah <laughs> so like realizing that's also like an issue with the that girl like it's not attainable to a lot of people yeah 100 percent or even I feel like I'm in the spectrum of like right now the house we're renting um, that we're moving out of it is older it has like these really old yellow walls and like mm-hmm. our toilet broke just <laughs> randomly my bathroom yeah. was flooded and I was mm-hmm. like nice like for I kid you not for like two weeks we were just like patching it up by putting like a towel it was like leaking from somewhere oh, and I was like we need a plumber and then we just put it off and like I'm that girl right now that I'm like nothing works and that's okay and you know there's nothing wrong with it like that's my reality and that's why even like with our youtube like podcast if you look (laughs) at the the differences between kelty and i it is like comical because i'm like half the time i'm like struggling to get my mic to work or like i have like a sheet behind me because like there's like crazy walls or whatever and here's actually this little wheel back to the beginning with the christian bale Here's another 
great example of like, it looks better than it is. So you see, if, if you're watching YouTube, you see my beautiful white apartment. Um, it seems nice. Everything is aesthetic. I don't have furniture. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it looks simple because I haven't bought, I haven't moved in. It's an empty white room. Like, do you know what I mean? So, but like you see this or even like when I take yeah, totally. like uh, selfies in this mirror, it, it does. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I take photos, of this beautiful white background, but then my friends come over to visit and I'm like, here's my studio. Mm-hmm. It's a, two pieces of music equipment and like my camera gear, that's all that's in it. Like it's the most unwelcoming thing to live in. Like it's, it's not, but I was like, I've set it up so I could take cool photos. Absolutely. Like, so they realize that like versus like, yeah, you're, there's a lot of flaws, but yours is cozy and it's lived in and 100%. it's nice and enjoyable. And like, so even if it looks beautiful, sometimes it's not that great. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That is so funny. That's like the place we're okay. renting in New York. We have to like yeah. short term furnish it. And I'm just doing uh-huh. like the bare minimum. I'm like a bed, oh, yeah. a nightstand. I'm like a desk for Michael because I'm yeah. like I'll work on a couch. I don't care. And I'm just like I'm... gonna laugh at how empty this apartment is, but it is what it is, and it, it doesn't bug me at all. So I'm no. like, yep, yeah, we're just some places I... we're gonna sit on the floor, and that's okay. <laughs> I feel that, and what, also back to what we were saying with the moving a lot. It's great. It, it if you can do it, love it. But realize you're gonna have to cut a lot of your needs because like I haven't had a bed frame in eight years <laughs> because like I moved so much I was like I can get totally. by with a mattress on the ground like it, it's like and then some people come in they're like oh nice like it's very college store <laughs> mess but you know, I was like it's, it's not worth it I move way 100%. too much and so like that's like also like it sounds so great like moving across the country all that I bought a table for the first time in a decade this little cheap hundred dollar Amazon oh, one love Amazon like, Oh, it's great. Dude, I mean, I am like such, like, I don't like spending money on furniture. Like, throw pillows, count me in. I love a good throw pillow. Furniture, so nice. I'm like, am I an adult? Until I bought, purchased like a a big size furniture. Like, I bought a really nice couch in Miami. Yeah. I like waited six months and like, honestly, I don't even think it was like the expensive couches. Like, I would tell Uh people how much it costs and they were like, that's not even like, that nice of a couch and I'm like well to me that's the most I've ever purchased for furniture yeah and this beautiful couch it was white and pristine and cozy and it fit both Michael and I on like a lounge chase like Uh so we could watch tv together and I wasn't like falling in the crack Uh or something and then we decided Mm -hmm. to move Mm -hmm. again and I was like are you kidding me like we were I think I had that couch for like three months I had to sell it and now lesson learned and i don't know if i can bring myself to that's what <laughs> make a purchase other than an every Amazon time i buy furniture i just kind of like and this is why i don't buy it to a fault like i wait <laughs> i used to like label myself as a minimalist but now i'm like kelty stop lying you just are too lazy to buy things <laughs> but like I, every time i go to buy furniture i'm like okay you could buy this reasonably placed one now or you could save to your dream house that you might build in 10 years and then which is a nice yeah. thought until you realize you haven't bought a table. I was like, hey, you can buy the $100 one. <laughs> but like, totally. I'm trying to get a bit better at that because I think, yeah, live a little too bare sometimes. 100%. Yeah. Now that we have this house that will be our oh. own, this will be the first oh. thing we've ever had yeah. in our life. I am like, I will debate it. I will debate if I, but I probably will still have some Amazon for entry oh, because I, girl loves her deal. Don't get, it? never get too good. Never get too good for that regardless. And it's like, I feel like Michael and I know that, like, we, neither of us are, like, big, like, want to stay somewhere Mm -hmm. for long. Like, we're probably, like, a five-year tops kind of person where we're, like, five years, let's, like, pick up and move if we can. Like, that's kind of our goal. So I'm literally, like, it's never ending. Unless we decide to have a child one day, which wouldn't be Mm -hmm. for a very long time, we're going to constantly keep on moving so it's just gonna be a constant heartbreak every time i have to say about this furniture you know i know that's why i was like it's too much i can't emotionally invest in furniture my emotions are already so fragile as it is like <laughs> like i can't get kind of emotionally attached to my like oh, yeah table or desk i mean i still think about that couch in miami oh. and like we sold it to this guy and he like had my phone number because like i think we had some warranty that was like hey you can get it clean for free whatever oh. And he, like, had texted me a month ago being, like, hey, like, can you give me more deets on, like, where you got it? I think, like, a friend wanted to purchase, like, 
recreated or whatever. And I was like, man, like I was remembering all the good memories for that couch, all the chats I had on that couch, all like the naps I had on it. And I was just like, Wow, this is literally a couch, and I, I need to get over this. It's so good. You just have to appreciate it. It was a, it was a season, not a lifetime. A quick season. Yeah, yeah. very quick, quick turnaround. But yeah. quick turnaround. So that means, can I plant in your mind? You guys move to Spain in five years. Absolutely. That is one that, of the that's places. Like, that's like my dream. I mean, <gasps> how did I not know I, that? I, I started. Oh, actually, feel we talked about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like obsessed with my life every single day there. And I love the people. I love the culture. I love the weather. Oh it's God. like so beautiful. And I love the city. You literally have the ocean and the city. It's everything. Like it is a dream. Because like I love California, but like you don't really have a city if you want the ocean. Because Los Angeles like isn't near no. the ocean. And that Los Angeles as a city isn't really like a city you can walk around. So no, I've, it's not even a city. It's just some like office buildings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you want to be in the suburbs more in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. you know? So that's where like Spain was like all the things I love in, about California and like the weather, but they also had a city and oh, I can't oh. gawk more. Michael and I plan on hopefully one day it's like hard with like time zones for Michael yeah. um, with his oh. company. So that's mm-hmm. where like, we were like, what if we went for the summer? We thought about Spain. We looked at it mm-hmm. and he was like, I just think I'd be working in the middle of the night. Yeah. And that's tough. in the end, he's got, we got a grind right now. Yeah. So we're like, okay, that makes sense. We're in the we'll grind. Stay on the same time zone. But are you wanting to move to Spain? Like, we'll, we'll talk more after. But, uh, but it's oh. like, that's a like lifetime goal. Oh, is this something you can't No, disclose? I just like, it's like, I, I don't want to like get the people excited. But no, that's definitely like, um, a, like life's milestone is like to get a place in spain like that's the that's like one of oh. it you want to go half seas let's do it literally okay <laughs> i'm down we can get like a like a like a duplex yes oh my gosh Mike, yes honestly we just gotta get michael and meg so just like hey boys we have an idea yeah. <laughs> we're like 40 still doing the podcast <laughs> okay i hope we are time. so we can play this in like 10 years time oh. we could play this back in spain that should be the 10-year goal. Yes. 10-year goal. Record an episode in Spain. Yes. We are speaking this into existence. Even if we don't live there, I love at some point. Yeah. How about that? At some point, we record an episode in Spain. Oh, yeah. In general. 100%. That could That's be like a three-year sure. plan. That's like a three-year plan. That's like a one-year plan in my eyes. That Just could let be... let me know when you want to go to Spain. <laughs> I Well, this will transition perfectly. I'm going end of June, so I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. That's a little... Hey, <laughs> I was like, I'm you got up my life right now. You got three weeks? To go to New York. Yeah, you got some Oh, plans. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be so fun. Oh. Where are you going in Spain? So I actually... I'll just to inspire you guys. Like, let's all get excited for our summer plans. Yeah. So my summer plan. Jet setter. Exactly. I go to Sweden. If you uh, don't know, I'm a Swedish resident now. Crazy. I know. But um, full Swede. Not actually. But um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to Sweden in the beginning of June uh, to reunite with my lover. And then me and my best friends haven't, only one's been to like Europe and the other two have not. And so they're coming uh, to Spain and I'm going to like tour them around for two weeks. So we're going to go to Marbella uh, for the first couple days. And then we're going to go to Ibiza or I can never say Ibiza. 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 Isn't that how you say it? I feel like they, yeah, I don't know. I feel like like they like do something with their tongue. I know. I can't do it. I can't do it. But it's not Ibiza. It's like Ibiza. I can't. I sound stupid saying it. We're doing that for a couple of days. A uh, mm-hmm. classic visa. We're going. Yeah, just paint the picture in your mind. <laughs> I think Calvin Harris is playing on the Friday. I was like, please, please, can we go? Um, so we got got oh, that wow. planned, and then we're doing Barcelona for a week after visa. Um, and then so that is the girls trip, and then I'm going back to uh, Megs, and then we're doing Europe. It's not concrete where we're going. But we're going to a land potentially that has a lot of pizza and gelato, and so fingers crossed that happens. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm just gonna be living through you. Oh, thank you on your story. I that is fantastic. That's what I was like. I'm, I'm excited. To, like I won't be documenting everything, but I'm doing. I'm planning like this. I have this really like artsy video plan for it and of course i'm gonna post it on stories because i was like i even just want the memories for myself and bring 100%. you guys all with me so if you don't have your chance to like go to spain or italy like just just hop on my more stories i'll bring you with me yeah we'll, we'll go together that's fantastic that's gonna be such a fun summer 
That's like, oh, I cannot wait. I don't even think Michael knows this yet, but like for our honeymoon, I want to do, <laughs> I, I've planned everything. I'm like, I oh, you know got where it. we're going to go. It's your honeymoon. Make it what you want. I'm picky. He'll, he's like, I'll do whatever. I don't care. Perfect. But I want to do like a Europe trip and like hit all those different spots. Oh. Cause I went when I was in college, Yeah. but I was like so broke. I couldn't yeah. go, I couldn't do anything. I could barely afford a croissant. I was just kind of, you know, walking my way around. And I just think it'd be so fun as an adult to go. And now, like, I'm not a crazy person also that goes to, like, clubs all the yeah. time. So I just feel like I would really embrace the the wine on the evenings. Yeah. And so I'm going to convince him as I have that. Yeah. That, that we're going to just be running around i'm one of those girls that like her honeymoon i don't want to relax like i already live on the beach like yeah where you've people done that come in vacation yeah i'm like no i want to run myself ragged that sounds great that sounds oh. romantic I w- <laughs> live life like that's it like get it all in we've relaxed all too much let's get like yeah let's get the endorphins going to get an adrenaline and see new things and just be put in crazy situations and see what happens and try yes. new foods and drinks and oh that sounds amazing yeah i can't wait for you Oh, thank Should you. we wrap it up with um, a question? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I just posted on our story. So if you guys follow us on Instagram, please do. You can go DM us right now, actually. Well, I've got you. A question. Ask us a question. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to read out some. Any questions. Let's see what we got. Do, do. You want to play some? Ooh, okay, I got two. One, we'll do one travel one, okay, and one fitness one. I think that's Perfect. appropriate to the episode. Okay. okay, so I have Amman Human. Sorry, I I did not pronounce that right. I I don't know her username. She asked, "What was your guy's favorite place to travel, and where do you want to go next?" Just in general. Yeah. So, what's your favorite mm. travel destination? What's next on the bucket list? Hmm. I think my favorite spot was, I really liked Greece. I went with my best friend, mm-hmm. Jordan. Like we had finished studying abroad and we just like took a couple weeks and just like before we went back to America, we hopped around to like Budapest and then we ended up in Greece. And that was like so lovely with her and it's so calming and like beautiful and so much good food. Oh. I love euros. They're just like dollar euros and it made a college kid happy and it was fantastic i love it yeah and then for next i don't even know like we haven't really planned i mean we're going to new york but we're going to cabo because we're getting married yes in cabo and michael has a company trip planned so that's our next place Mm -hmm. um is mexico Mm -hmm. i do love mexico what about you tequila oh but um my favorite yeah, you place and tequila. Oh, it's just it's my home it's my home a love story it's true it's all this time <laughs> but um i think my favorite place it was just more also like it's tough to say sometimes it's not the place it's the memories attached to the place um but for me it mm-hmm. is barcelona uh because uh this is a story time maybe i'll say one time on the podcast but that's where me and megs met for the first time So, like, we had our first kiss and fell in love in Barcelona. So it was just a – did some other things that aren't PG for the first time in Barcelona. And it was just, like, the happiest moment of my life. Like, I could look back and, like – so I just cherished Barcelona very much. It was, like, my wild love trip to Europe. So that's why it will forever be my favorite place. That's Um, so cute. I love that. And then then for excited to travel to, I, like – if you guys don't know, like I, I've, I've, I've have such a love for like EDM music, DJing, all that kind of stuff. So that's just like my biggest passion in the world. And so to go to Ibiza, um, is so iconic for me because that's kind of, if you didn't know, like, uh, you can have like a residency in for DJing. So that means like every week you're like guaranteed to play. And kind of, if you have like a residency in Ibiza, like you're the top of the food chain of DJs so it's so like oh, iconic yeah. like some people of like the biggest DJs of all time have res- like Kelvin Harris has residency this summer there like everyone knows that in Vegas but like Vegas is Vegas yeah. it's very North American like Ibiza is like worldwide so you gotta like open your horizon a bit more so like uh that's why I'm excited and I've never been I know it's cliche but oh god I'm excited no. 
I don't think it's cliche at all. I think it is I like what you like... you make it, you know? It, exactly. And then to end off, we'll do one fitnessy thing. Okay. There's so much info in the fitness industry. How do you tell BS from the truth? P.S. Love the podcast. And that is from the Abster. Um, appreciate you. Thank you. The so Abster. How, how, I like that name. There's a number after it, but I already exited it out. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, how do you tell? When I was first starting my fitness journey, it was like, it, you don't really know because you do hear all these like clickbait things like pinpointing fat or you see those crazy Pinterest workouts that like claim to get rid, get rid of your hip dips, whatever it may be. Um, and I think I really mm. just searched for like something scientific that could back it up. So I always looked for like truth in the research, not just like claims they just threw out there. And always, I mm. guess, remember that if it seems too easy, like pinpointing mm-hmm. fat, doing a hundred crunches and also you're going to have abs, like most likely that's not the case. And I guess that's how I would really figure it out was I just always looked up like the credentials of it, of is this backed up by anything? How oh, would you? Fully. Like, I think those, like the fact I pretty much bang on agree says it all. Like credentials is number one. Like see if someone has education, experience, certification, like those three right there. Like that should, that's just like a bare minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. If there was a pill, if there was a simple workout, everyone would be shredded. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'd always say like, there's a reason not every famous person has six packs. Like there's a, you know, I, if it was mm-hmm. just easy, they'd all have bought it and do it. So realize that. And I think a big red flag for me is anyone who talks in absolutes. Now that seems simple, but like people who are like, you have to do this. I have the best program. You need to do this. Yeah. You have to eat keto. You have to eat vegan. You have to uh, weight lift. You have to, anyone who says like absolutes is Mm -hmm. wrong because I've learned anything especially like I come from a science background the smarter someone is the more often they'll say it depends go listen to an Andrew Huberman podcast he's like a Stanford neurological surgeon or neuroscientist like the smartest of the smart and every single thing he prefaces is like it all depends you never know this is what the science says but it's going to be different because it's so contextual just because someone says it there's so many factors we're all so different so if someone's willing to just admit mm-hmm. they don't know certain things, but they're willing to learn and they don't talk in absolutes, they're always like dependent, adapted to you. That's, I think, an undervalued thing to yes, look into. 100%. I love it. Well, Kelty, I think that wraps up this week's podcast. <laughs> wraps it up with a big old bow. <laughs> Um, that was the weirdest bow. That was like a mustache. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you guys want to DM us, comment on our podcast Instagram, or leave a review, it would be appreciated. Uh, we like reading them as well and getting yeah. feedback. And if there's some topics you want us to cover, feel free to let us know. Yeah, even if you want to go leave us a review. And then ask a comment in the review and we'll read them off uh, next episode. So just you can leave a little review. <gasps> we'll read some that. of the response and like answer, like leave a response of it and like ask a question and we'll answer it on the next podcast and give you a little shout out. So we would love that. Yes. Perfect. All right. Okay. Well, have a fabulous day. We will see you next time. Oh. Love you. Bye.